All right. So Datsun 5 speed came out of a 280Z. I think this is from a ZX. Um, I picked it up in a junkyard. So there's the two halves. There's the transmission, the guts of the thing. So uh, put this transmission in. Everything's working. All the gears are working. Synchro's a little stiff, a little, a little glitchy, but otherwise good. But it was making noise, and then I noticed it was making noise, um, you know, when you uh, take it out of gear, and then you'd push in the clutch, and the throwout bearing is spinning, and then when you'd let the clutch out, I was hearing a grinding sound, so I figured I had a bad bearing on this transmission. And then I uh, jacked it up, drained the oil out, <clears throat> and... I found some parts, not just these, these came out with when I took the case apart, but there were parts that looked similar to this. And for those, some of you probably can guess what the hell those are. I figured that it was, uh, in fact, what it is, and that's a bearing cage. So a bearing cage had blown up and uh, left the parts in the bottom of the transmission stuck to the magnet. So you can see the little rivet. If you look at a normal bearing cage on any old bearing, you'll see it looks like something like this. These are, these are not transmission bearings, these are wheel bearings. But you can see that little rivet between each ball that uh, pins that thing together. So this is the leftovers. That's what it looks like after it falls apart and gets crunched into the bearings. So uh, I was thinking it was the main bearing because that's what it kind of sounded like which be right up here in the nose of this thing, but uh, that's not what it is. That one's worn, but it's not destroyed, and it's uh, the idler is good. Again, not great, but not destroyed. So where uh, the failure was is right in here. Grab some light. Right in here. Put some light up in there. You can see right there hopefully you can see that there they are there's a couple bearings you see they're not spaced out properly there's no retainer in there there's the leftovers of retainer you can see a big chunk there in the bottom so uh yeah so this bearing is fried don't know why i got my suspicions and that is uh this this transmission was definitely rebuilt you can see the oil, orange sealant and the orange sealant so clearly it was rebuilt and uh, like a lot of people that work on cars they tend to fuck things up and uh, if I had to guess when they press these shafts and they probably pressed on the inner race of the bearing not the outer so they put all that stress on the ball and the retainer um, and eventually it just uh, went bad that's my guess I don't know that for sure but I, you know, it's, uh, doesn't make any sense that the retainer would, uh, blow up like that. So anyways, that's what we got. So this thing is going to a full rebuild and, um, my plan is to do some other videos. The only other thing I noticed that's kind of strange is right there, right there. You can see that pressed steel coming through there. It's all deformed. Looks fine. On this side, right there, right there. But it's deformed on this side. I don't know, maybe it's just was crushed that way so it wouldn't slip out. Um, I'm not that familiar with that piece, but uh, I'll need to do some research on that. Otherwise, it's a good thing that that bearing that blew up was on the bottom, because any shit that came out of there just dropped to the bottom of the case and stuck to the magnet generally. So I'm hoping that we don't see any other issues. Um, also noticing here on this nut, that's got some, uh, some weird marks on it right there on the flats. So they may have reused the nut and, uh, oh shit, motherfucker Jones. Yeah, that's loose. So that's a problem. This is supposed to be staked and it's been restaked. You can see. So that was a total hack job. What a bunch of bullshit. Um, so yeah, luckily the, the nut didn't come off. 
And I don't know if this offhand, I don't know if this is a left hand or a right hand thread, but uh, I'm hoping it's left because I don't believe the rights are available. Anyways, that's it for now. Um, that's the initial prognosis. So, uh, more to come. Okay, this is the, uh, the nut that some knuckle had used twice, staked it twice. It was loose, and I wasn't going to risk it at all. So, I found with these staking things, same thing on that stub axles on the rear of a 280Z. Don't try to knock the stake out and hope to God it doesn't fuck up the threads, because it will. So what I did is just use this Dremel tool, a little abrasive wheel, and uh, take your time and cut almost right down to the threads, stop short, and then get your uh, very small chisel punch tool underneath that staking and just kind of lift it out. Once it's lifted out, that nut is just going to free spin, no problemo. So that is... Uh, that's what I found worked best. Don't risk the whole damn transmission to tr try to preserve this nut. This nut's going in the shit can. So, and I've got a new one. This is the left hand thread. These are still available, not that expensive. So, there you go. Okay, this is where we're at. So that nut's been loosened and destaked and can come off. But before I take that off, I need to take all these shifting forks out. The three there, the EC right here right there and there so uh first things first make sure you remember how this all stuff all this stuff goes together put it down on paper take videos take pictures so there's no mistake putting it back together so i'm going to start by removing these three bolts and behind all three of these bolts there are uh, ball bearings and springs that have to go in a certain order so keep all that stuff safe in plastic bags and remember the order and uh, more to come. All right, let's give you an update here on the uh, disassembly of the 280Z five speed. <clears throat> so uh, the whole uh, rear end of this thing is pretty well taken apart. I wanted to uh, point out uh, one area of difficulty. Everything's gone really, really smoothly. I mean, I've got all the right tools, so it's a really helpful. But uh, the only, I'll call snag so far, or moment of concern, was I got everything disassembled except for the synchro hub that you see here. And then there's a piece behind it that, and all of this is engaged on this splined shaft here. So there's this piece here, it's got these three tabs that engage there into the hub, okay? And uh, and then this sleeve, this is the bearing sleeve, this is what the, uh, there's a uh, needle bearing on the outside of this. So this is what that needle bearing rides on and allows the synchro hub, all of that to slide around, okay? And uh, so this used to be pressed up against that. So I couldn't get this off until that was removed. And I was thinking that thing was not going to be a big deal to get off of there. Um, you know, it doesn't require that much pressure. It doesn't really require, it shouldn't require any pressure at all, really. It's just there to provide a machine surface for those needle bearings. So then I went to remove it and it, that sucker was on there. So, um, I started getting a little concerned and, you know, I checked everything twice, make sure I wasn't missing a snap ring or something like that. And so I wasn't overlooking anything and I, I wasn't, and I looked at, you know, some of the videos in the factory service manual. Clearly this thing was on there too tight. And so, uh, I needed to get behind here, right in here, behind here with a bearing puller so I could get some uh, pressure on this and then bring it forward and by doing so sliding this sleeve off So I got my uh, trusty bearing puller with the extensions on there great tool That's a Harbor Freight tool and it comes with everything you see here except for these little extensions so you can just use these uh, uh, Whatever it is five sixteenths or three eighths uh, couplers to uh, add some length to that so that's helpful so I could get that that bearing puller behind there, right in here. But I had a bunch of stuff in the way. So I had uh, I had this shaft right here. 
So the shaft was engaged in this hole here. So it was kind of in the way, but it's easily taken out. I just uh, took the, the, the retainer plate that has the six Torx head screws in there that are now, it's not in there any longer. It looks like this. There it is. So that was, uh, that was in there. You can loosen it. You can't get it off yet because you've got this thing in the way. Same thing I'm trying to get rid of. But once you loosen that, then you can disengage the shaft. That plate fits right in that slot. Okay, so I got that stuff out of the way. And then I also had the, uh, the dowel pins. There's one on each side, one here and then one on the other side. Those were a little bit in the way. Um, not totally. I was thinking I might put it in the press, but that was turned out to be not really feasible. So I got enough stuff out of the way so I had good access. And then that allowed me to uh, <clears throat> just show you half here. Just allowed me to get this bad boy in there like that. And then the other half on the other side. And then, of course, I've got these extensions and, uh, and then the uh, cross piece here allows me to put in a threaded rod well okay so i get it all set up and i put a wrench on it with 14 millimeter uh, socket and i start putting some pressure on it and the thing's not budging and i'm thinking shit you know what there's something wrong here somebody had done prior work on it i'm hoping they didn't screw it up you know uh so then i uh i decided to uh i mean i thought about cutting this off those are not available anymore, so that's not really... I don't want to do that. And I decided just to kind of man up and uh, and uh, keep the puller on there. But then I reached for uh impact wrench and uh, put it on there. Gave it a couple of shots, and, uh, and it started moving slowly. And I'm thinking, Christ, this should not need this much... Uh, but I uh, kept at it. It started loosening it up pretty quick, and then it came right off. So um, kind of lesson learned. But don't be too discouraged. Just kind of I mean, be safe and be careful and all that because you don't want to screw anything up. But uh, that's uh, kind of what happened there. So this did come off. There we go. Just like that. It's in beautiful shape. No problem there. And then the uh, synchro hub. And... A tabbed collar behind it. It's like that. So, uh, and then I took the uh, the retainer plate um, for the bearings. So that's out. You saw that in the box a minute ago. And um, so now I'm ready to go to the next step, which is to, uh, according to the videos, um, to drive this assembly out uh, away from the camera. So in the direction of travel of the car. So we're looking forward right now. So I'm going to be tapping on both of these shafts at the same time. I'm going to be doing it away so I don't gum up these threads. So you have to be careful. Um, these threads here and these threads here. Where is it? There it is. Yeah. Not the threads, but the splines. So, uh, so yeah, you got to get a five pound hammer and just kind of start uh, tapping away and uh, I suspect I might have to put a little oomph into it. You're going to do these both at the same time. You get, they both need to move out of the intermediate plate at the same time because right now these gears are meshed and once they get out a certain distance uh, some deflection starts opening up between these and then this one's going to drop and then it should just pull right out and as soon as this one pulls out then the nose uh, comes off. You can see this moves. See that? That's going to come out all together inside of there. There's a on the uh, tip of that shaft, main shaft, there is a uh, needle bearing. And uh, and then at that point we'll have all the uh, everything out and uh, be ready to uh, further disassemble all those gear sets and synchro rings and everything and uh, get the new bearings. Uh, we'll get the new bearings pressed into the intermediate plate and then we'll kind of reverse order and put it all back together. One final thing. So I showed you in the, earlier in the video the messed up bearing. That's how this whole project, that's why we're doing this project. There it is. Now you can really see it. Look at that mess. So bearings are no longer retained, so they do whatever they want. They can gather on one side. Um, 
doesn't really work very well. And you can see remnants there, right there. There's there's a bearing retainer right there, folks. Isn't that wonderful? It probably makes things work really well. So uh, good news is, I think I mentioned this earlier. Good news is this bearing is in the bottom of the near the bottom of the case. So as shit was getting crumpled up here and spit out. Um, it was just dropped in the bottom of the case, thankfully, so it didn't get sucked in any other gears, synchros, or destroy anything. It just dropped to the bottom, and, uh, and the bearing is destroyed, but it didn't destroy anything else, so that's really good news. Because um, that bearing is going in the crap can anyways. Um, so, that's where we're at. More to come. Alright, here's the progress check. That didn't take long. That was pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, you're gonna tap both shafts out um, from the rear, from the rear of the transmission. So from the spline side, that piece that engages in the drive line. And uh, you're gonna drive both out at the same time. Now, my experience just now is uh, it went pretty, pretty easily. I used uh, a five pound, I think that's five pound, four or five pound hammer and just uh, hit it carefully and uh, consistently and it start it starts to move so the bearing stayed in you can see and uh, the shaft slid through um, the bearing staying in because it's actually I'll show you here it's retained on this side so it has nowhere to go so the shaft has to slide out and then the thing I noticed is that the, the bottom shaft doesn't really take here. This doesn't really take any banging. You're not going to bang on this. You're going to tap it every once in a while. So basically what's going to happen is you're, you're tapping this out. This has got takes a little more beef, a little more oomph to get it out. And as you're tapping it out, you're going to be tapping this one along. So that Because remember, the gears are meshed and they need to stay that way. You don't want to clash the gears and damage those. So you're just going to tap, tap, tap back and forth. And then the whole thing's going to come out. Um, and just be ready for it. Have your hand on the bottom shaft here, this one, because it's going to, all of a sudden, it's just going to kind of dump out. So you need to make sure it doesn't dump out and then onto the floor. And, uh, and then once that, you, know, you just take that out. And then you're going to remove the nose piece. This is the piece that actually engages into the clutch right there. And there's the needle bearing I mentioned in the inside. And that fits right on the end there. So, uh, so you'll remove that. And then this last piece, at this point, it, I mean, it should be free. Uh, if not, it's going to take one more little small tap, but it's all good. And uh, what you're left with is what we're seeing here. So we're getting... Uh, we're getting close and uh, more pictures of the infamous bearing. Look at that piece of shit, man. <laughs> it's amazing that it worked at all, but and it didn't really work that well. Just, just look at that, man. That is just that is hilarious. Just a pile of junk rolling around there. That's a real testament to the engineering on this thing. I mean, no retainer. And it still spins relatively freely. It's just that it's not going to do that long before it blows up and damages your transmission. So uh, next steps here, right there. Uh, I don't care about this bearing because it's going. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drive this bearing out from this side on the inside race, which will you know it's not good for the bearings, but it's going in the shit can anyway. So. We'll tap it out from this side, and then this center, the intermediate plate, is going to be completely free and uh, ready to clean up, get rid of the goo, um, make it all nice, and then set it aside for the assembly. All right, here's the counter shaft. I remove the bearing from that side. That was the destroyed bearing, and it looks like this. Look at that thing. What a mess. Thank God it didn't fuck up the transmission, but it didn't. It just contained the damage within that poor bearing. And then on the other side, we've got the, this bearing. This is the uh, point, this is the forward section of the transmission. 
and uh, this is the piece that fits into the the bell housing right down there the smaller of those two holes right the thing i think is kind of strange is that bearing has got a recess in it right there you see that and typically if that's there that's there for a reason uh, to put a retainer ring an external ring to trap it to contain it but you know um when you turn this over it's gonna make a big mess when i do this is what i'll do for video okay you turn that over and uh yeah i guess i'm just i'm gonna have to do some research because i'm wondering why why is that recess there because it does no good there um it almost seems like that bearing might be backwards because if it were Facing the other way, you might be able to, you might be able to have an external ring here. I'll just have to check the manual. Actually, it doesn't look like there's, it looks like the case is too thick to actually have this recess protruding if it were the other way. So I don't know what's going on there. I'll check it out, but I just wanted to uh, kind of put it on the video anything that looks unusual so that bearing is just about ready to be pulled and uh, in good shape and then over here there's the cleaned up intermediate plate all bearings out been cleaned up been put in the solvent tank um, so we're over the hump man we're starting to do things to make this thing go together rather than tearing it apart that's it more later all right here's the uh the real, uh, a rear, <laughs> rear housing of the transmission. Right there is the, uh, that's the uh, shifter shaft that comes from, uh, from the back here. Right in here. Okay. So uh, I'm going to take that out. But before I do, I just want to make sure I get a picture of the orientation of everything. And that shaft is about just under four and a half inches from the end of the shaft to this clamp and lever. Let's see here. The other thing I want to point out is this little detail right here. That's the oil gutter. And that gutter goes all the way back, if you follow it, goes all the way back to the near the rear oil seal. So that's what provides oil. That little tray runs oil back to the end of the transmission and provides the oil needed uh, just behind that seal where the uh, propeller shaft fits in. So the only way the oil gets there though is if it's um, if there's a piece, a, a small piece of gutter that's attached to the intermediate plate and you have to have it turned up. So when you put this all together it gathers oil spinning off those gears, goes into this little gutter and then it flows back. You know, I don't think this, I know it wasn't oriented correctly, so that meant that uh, that rear bushing in the back near the seal was starved for oil more than likely. It might have gotten some, I don't know for sure, but it's definitely not the way it was intended to work. So we're going to make that right when we put it all together. Again, pay attention to that. All right, so uh, I'm going to show you how to remove the shift rod. So here's the linkage right there in the back. And if you look inside, I just had that little video there, prior video, so where I'm shining the light there, you can see the fork, and you can see a little nut on the top. And uh, let me grab a pointer here. I'm actually <laughs> learning as much about video production as I am transmissions. Okay, so it's right there, I'm pointing to it. So you know, so what you have in there is you have a tapered pin that runs through this and then a nut, a lock nut, where the pointer is there. So to get that out, you, uh, first of all, you want to brace it with a little half inch piece of wood. Get this, sorry for the hand in the way, let me get that in there. Yep. Okay, so brace, brace it with a little half inch piece of plywood like that. And then that 
nut is pointing straight up. So then you can reach through the side hole with a punch. See that? Right in here. So just go through in here. Put the nut, loosen the nut almost all the way, just leave a few threads on it. And then you're better off hitting that nut than the end of that uh, tapered pin. It came out, uh, it, needed, it needed just one good punch and then it uh, slipped out the way you see it here. So now that once that's released, I'll slide that fork off and then I can pull the whole unit out the back. And the reason I wanted to do that, if you look at this, there's an O-wing out there and I'd like to get that replaced. That's probably never ever been replaced. And that'll uh, just tighten up the transmission, seal it up a little better, prevent any kind of leaks. So that's what I'm doing. All right, I uh, ended up getting a new seal for the uh, shift shaft. There's an O-ring seal that I'll show you here. There's actually two seals you gotta be aware of. There's one here, much simple O-ring, and you can replace that easily. And there's another one inside of this housing here, right down in there in that recess. And let me see if I can get some light in there. Anyways, it's on the... Uh, I can't get any light in there. It's down in there. It's the inside. And it's a it's a typical oil seal. It looks like this, just miniature. Fits on whatever that is, about a half inch shaft. So you gotta get the other one out of there, and which is uh, you can't really get at it. So uh, and that's what it looks like when you get all done. So I basically had to mangle it, but I just wanted to tell you how I got it out of there pretty easily actually. I just took a punch. Punch, where is it here? Oh there we go. Just took a punch and put it on the grinder and grind a little bit of a chisel shape. Let's see if I can get it here. Yeah, there you go. Just a little bit of a chisel shape. And then just slipped it down there and gave it a couple taps to uh, bend it out. And then it came out with relatively little pain, but you do, of course, destroy it. This might be a little uh, overkill replacing this, but I felt like shit. I got this thing out and that's never been replaced in, uh, you know, almost 50 years or 40 years of this transmission. So I decided to do it. And here's the new ones, got them from the dealer. They're buck 25 each. So I got two just in case, uh, since they're so cheap. Anyways, that's it for this piece. And then I'll just drive it in like you normally would, uh, just clean it up and then just put it on the end of a, a shaft and just tap it in gently. All right, so uh, this transmission has been completely taken apart, so we're uh, turning around the corner here and putting it all back together. So this uh, piece is going to be the, uh, the adapter plate. That's the intermediate plate that goes in between the, the rear and the bell housing, the rear housing and the bell housing. So the first step here, and if you follow along, so this is in the 82 manual for manual transmission, the factory manual. It's on page MT11, uh, title is Assembly of the Dafter Plates. The first thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna do it a little differently than, I'm not gonna put the dowels in or the gutter just yet, because they're gonna get in my way later. So I'll show you that as we go. But the first thing to do is put the bearing in. This is the bearing for the main shaft, and it is uh, restrained on one side. So it's got a machine, uh, um, surface here that won't allow it to go through so pretty easy to understand how to do this so get it squared in there this is a easy press fit I wouldn't even use a press because I'd be better off just doing it the way I'm doing here so we're going to tap just a little light tap you can feel it go in and we're going to go around the perimeter so we don't get it all cockeyed and notice I'm hitting on the outside of the race not the inside because we uh don't want any pressure on the ball bearing. So all I'm doing here is tapping it in easy. There it is. There, there, there. You get a big solid feel. So that's it. This is step two on the intermediate plate. So I just showed you, showed you how to put this main bearing in. Really easy install. <laughs> Take it easy on that bearing. So now we're going to put in this plate, covers that uh, bearing, and then creates a uh, stop 
for the, the other bearing that'll come in here later. So first thing we want to do is install the uh, idler shaft. There's a little slot right there that engages with a plate right there. So you got to put this in first. So slide that in there. And then we engage the plate in that slot. Get this all lined up and it should just fall right in place like that. And uh, now we've got six uh, eight millimeter Torx head screws, flathead screws that are gonna go in here. We're gonna use uh, medium strength blue Loctite on all these threads. Yep. So I'll finish uh, putting all these in and then we'll torque them down to tighten them down to the uh, torque spec, which I think is uh, 14 to 18 foot pounds is the spec. So I'll finish this up and then torque these all to spec using a star pattern so I get good distribution. And uh, that's it for now for this piece. So I wanted to revisit uh, one of these points I just said uh, just a minute ago that I wasn't going to install the gutter. This is the oil gutter. Fits right in this hole, pushes all the way through. What this does is points up and there's gear flying off the, I'm sorry, <laughs> there's oil flying off the gear here. Collects in this little trough, goes through this tube, and then you'll notice on the rear extension of your uh, transmission, this dumps into a little gutter that carries oil all the way back to the, near the rear oil seal uh, where the uh, propeller shaft, the differential shaft, or the drive shaft attaches to the uh, transmission. I bought new ones of these because they cost me $1.20 at the dealership. And um, this one's kind of boogered up, getting a little thin. So like I said, that'll get installed in here. And if you look at the manual, they've got a detail in there. So this needs to be bent forward. They don't do that in manufacturing. So you gotta bend this little tab around to create a gutter, closed end gutter. And again, it should point up, shown in the manual. It'll collect oil and then route it backwards to uh, to lubricate the back of the transmission. And then the other thing uh, in the manual they ask you to do is to, or they direct you to do really, is to put in the, uh, the positioning dowels for the intermediate plate. Um, <clears throat> I don't do that now, or the gutter, because I know that um, I'm gonna be pressing bearings here and following steps, and I don't want those things in the way. And there's plenty of, uh, it's better to put them in after you've got all the pressing done. All right, this is the uh, beginning of the uh, assembly for the, the main shaft. I put second gear on. There's a needle bearing in there. Lube it with your gear oil and the can here as you're going. So that's all good. I've got a new synchro on there because uh, second gear was the gear was the only gear that was shifting rough. And um, I've got my hand here. The uh, here's the ring that came out, and it's. You can see it's kind of worn, the teeth there, if you can see that, focused on that. Um, and then there's some weird stuff going on in the back here, like right there, right there. See where my fingernail is? See how that machining, that brass is just kind of stuck in there? That's not right. I mean, that didn't look good. Same thing right there, where my fingernail is. So uh, I'm taking this one out. And we'll swap it out and hope that it works better. Um, I mean, it worked out. It worked, but it just again, it was rough. So I'm replacing that. So uh, next step is you can see the hub sitting there. It's the synchro hub and the exterior, the interior. So this has to go together with the three springs and the three pawls that all fit together. We'll assemble that and then we'll slide that on. So let me uh, set that up. Okay, so here's the hub. Get this together. So I went ahead and bought new springs. They're cheap from the dealer. You get a pack of 10. You need nine for the whole transmission. So it's good, good cheap insurance in case those are weakening. And then the Pauls, you can get those as well. But uh, no, you can't get these. I can't remember. Anyways, you look at these and there's, these look fine to me. They're not really beat up or anything. 
So we put the springs in the hole there. And then the trick here is we got to hold all three, compress all three, and then slide it into the uh, into the outer hub ring. So uh, you can see the spring mark on the back side. This raised section goes on the outside. So that's pretty obvious when you're looking at it. Look for wear marks. The other thing I did is I marked this uh, tooth with yellow because it appears when you look at the wear marks. That's how this thing was assembled. So I don't want to mess with that. So I want to keep that the same. So uh, get this thing from the top, get it lined up. Turn the tooth over. Kind of compress them in. Now again, use a little uh, tool, which I don't have. I'm just going to use a pen retainer here. It's in. There you go. Okay, it's even on both sides, so they're in there. This moves allows it to move back and forth without falling out. Okay, so that's ready, but don't pick it up by the center head or it will fall apart. So now this piece will go onto the onto the shaft. And we'll uh, adjust the camera here. <laughs> there you go. So there's the synchro ring, the brass ring sitting there. Ready to accept this. And uh, slide this bad boy on there. Stop there, we put a little gear oil and everything, get it nice and lubed up. Okay, then there's three notches in the synchro, and those fit right where those pawls, the three spring and pawl assemblies come through. Let's get that on the spline. opportunity to put a, run some oil down in here. Some gear oil, get that all pre-lubed. Okay. So that's that piece. This one will stand and roll around. So these are the three old springs, so I'm going to put those aside so I don't accidentally reuse those. There we go. All right, just put the synchro hub on the next piece. So I know nothing's going anywhere. It's got a uh, fixed part of the uh, collar on the shaft. So I can put it up like this. Now this sleeve, this is the bearing sleeve that the race is, the bearing will ride on. And I'm gonna try to see if I can't get this on by hand just by yeah it's starting it's starting to go you know after i got it off i cleaned up all these journals with some uh, crocus cloth and uh so i'm gonna try to keep doing this try to get it on there okay it's almost there there we go nice perfect okay so now this assembly is not going anywhere. And, uh, and then the next piece is the, this bearing here. Now it's missing some. This is the one I had to replace because when I took it apart, these needles fell out. So that's not a good sign. So this is the old one. We're going to set that aside and with the new factory part. There it is. So uh, we're going to go ahead and slide that on and then loop it up after the fact, 
that fits on just like that. Now put plenty of gear oil on that. Now the next gear, so this is second, the next gear uh, is third, that's this gear here, this assembly, and um, so this one shifted okay, uh, third did, but this one, this one looks pretty worn out too, this synchro, you know, it's the inner ridges. But, uh, Okay, after I turned the video off there and after inspecting this synchro, you know, I decided to go ahead and uh, put a new one on there. And uh, so that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to add a little more lube here. Okay, and then we'll slide this whole piece on. This is uh, third gear. up on its end. Same kind of thing. Fits where those uh, lapels are. And then we'll slide this bad boy on. Fits right onto the bearing. Just like that. Okay. There you go. Okay, the next piece that goes on is this little washer here that has the bearing detent. Takes a new bearing, eighth inch bearing, fits right in that detent. And then these two dimples on this side of the washer, they go towards the front of the car. So they are leading as I put it on here. So it goes just like this and it fits nicely there. And that little uh, ball then here, the 8th inch bearing fits in this little hole right here. So we're going to use some thicker grease because I want to stick. It's gonna, we don't want to get this all boogered up. So I'm going to put a little there. And that's the trick here is uh, we want to put some this thicker grease on here so that it all sticks together while we put it in the press and drive it all home. So the ball goes right in that hole with the grease. And we slide this on and then we make sure we engage that detent onto the ball. To the ball. And it'll snap in, so right there. So that, you probably can't see that, but now this is fixed, so this is fixed on the shaft. It moves a little bit, but it's not going to spin. All right. So now um, this piece um, is ready to, uh, let's see, receive the bearing that will then be uh, pressed into, uh, actually the bearing's already in the intermediate plate, I'm sorry. And uh, so this, this whole assembly will be pressed in. We'll be using, um, we'll be using the, the hydraulic press to do so. And then this nose piece goes on a little bit later when we're putting everything together. So we'll set that aside for now. So that's where we're at. 
ready to do this. The only thing we're going to be really paying attention to when we drive this together is make sure this washer doesn't come loose. Because uh, if you do, then the ball and it will just get disengaging. You won't be able to fully seat this against the bearing face. Your gears won't line up. Trust me, I've done it before. Um, so that's the thing you really want to pay attention to is that this all sticks together. And I use this really good thick sticky grease so that it uh, will do just that. All right, so now we have uh, just finished up. We have the first portion of the main shaft assembled up to where it has to be now pressed into the intermediate plate through the main bearing here. And uh, before I take it to the press and show you how you do that, I had to make these two spacers. One here, smaller diameter pipe that's going to bear against the center race because again we're going to be driving the press onto this center race and I want to support it here so we don't put any stress on the bearings through and onto the outer race. That That's that piece. Then I've got a one and quarter inch pipe that fits right over the idler shaft and so that's how it's going to look. That's how it's going to be supported uh, on the table, on the press table, just like that. So uh, keeps everything nice and level and then keeps the pressure off this bearing. So you'll see, uh, you'll see that in a minute. This is essentially the same kind of thing that I was going to say. Um, <clears throat> the factory's got a part that they go to the trouble of welding these two pieces onto some plate steel so it's always in the right orientation. And you're also going to need same kind of arrangement when you do these two. So... Um, but I've, I'm doing this now, just, you know, I don't do this all the time, so I'm not going to bother to fab up the plate. This works, and you'll see in a second. Okay, a little correction. Kind of messed up on that last instruction. So the, the one and a quarter inch pipe is going to fit here on the main bearing to support it as we're driving in the shaft. So I'm going to flip this whole thing in the press. And during this operation, this shaft is below this, so you don't have to worry about that. This smaller diameter comes in when we do the, uh, the other uh, shaft here. So I just wanted to clarify that. Sorry about that. Okay, this is probably one of the trickiest parts of this assembly because we've got that washer and that detent ball bearing. They all want to fall out. All of these gears want to slide down. So I have this uh, packing material stuffed in there while I turn the camera on so I can take my hands off of it. So I've got my finger in here, my left hand, holding everything together. So I'm going to pull this packing out. It's out. You can't see it, but I marked everything down there. So I, I know where that detent is. And i got to get this right or I might smash a bearing and make a big mess. So then I'm just using a little dental tool kind of hold all that together, then I'm going to start driving it. Fill it in nice. Alright, I couldn't, uh, I just had my hands full, I couldn't get on the, uh, the video button to get that last push in, but it's all the way in now. I had some interfering, so make sure you have a large enough uh, piece on this side to drive it all the way home. The other thing I had some difficulty with is keeping that damn washer with the detent and the ball bearing all aligned so you're not gumming that up. So what I did is I took a piece of this blue nylon cord and did like two wraps on the last bit. I got it in the right place, got the push, you know, the washer, everything all indexed on the detent ball and I got it pushed all together with the gear set. Um, and back at the bench and then I did two wraps of this cord to hold it while I got it into place and then I used a uh, putty knife and I just pulled the rope out and then held the piece of, in there with the putty knife and then just did a couple pulls down and it went right in and before it cinched up I pulled the putty knife out my last pull and everything's perfect so wow that's the most difficult part of the I think of this whole project you got to get creative so there you go okay so uh, we just got back from the press where we had the main shaft installed into the intermediate plate um, we still have so we have uh, 
second, first and second, we have to put in third, it's over here. But before we can do that, we've got to get the counter shaft in. So the counter shaft I've already kind of started sliding in place into its bearing. And um, so we are going to uh, kind of get this tapped into place, get it started. And then we're going to get it over to the uh, press. And, uh, okay, that's good. So you got to keep all these gears meshed as you press it together. So our first step, like I said, is to take it over the next step is to take it over the press. And uh, we're going to use a different spacer. Now we're going to use this one inch pipe here and uh, drive it on in. Um, and it looks like we might need to add a little additional spacer here so that uh, we can clear this idler shaft that's sticking out. So uh, I'll, that'll give me a, another half inch. So this will seat nicely. So we're gonna drive this and it's gonna, and it's being restrained by that uh, intermediate plate. And uh, so let's go set this up over at the press. Okay, I got it set up in the press. We're supported underneath by this one inch pipe. It's long enough so that I can, as this comes down, um, well, that's not going anywhere. Never mind that. So, uh, so we're going to just start bringing this in and making sure they no resistance, so those gears are moving, meshing. There it is. Okay, just brought it back from the press. Doing a lot of getting a lot of exercise here. Um, so those are meshed together nicely. The, uh, so the next step is to uh, put in this gear here. And at the same time, oh, we got to put in uh, third gear and all that. So I'm going to stop the video here and we'll show you how that's done. Okay, the last step is a little tricky because um, you have to do a couple things at the same time. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to do it over at the press. So we need to get this counter shaft gear on that goes on the very front. So it's just this and a snap ring. But at the same time, we, we need to mesh and drive at the same time the, uh, what is that, fourth gear on the very tip. So you see, you have to get those together and get them engaged on the shaft at the same time, so like like I'm doing here, and uh, and then drive them at the same time, and you got to get those woodruff keys lined up. So it takes a little bit of finagling, but uh, and uh, so you don't want to drive any any piece more than the other. So. Uh, Yeah, and on this one, that's why we got this long pipe here, so we can clear the input shaft. So this, we're going to be driving, uh, so this doesn't need to be driven, this just slides on. The only thing we're driving is the, um, is this front gear on the uh, counter shaft. This one's going to go long for the ride, but you got to help it so it doesn't get bound up, and then, uh, get screwed up so uh, there you go you'll see that in just a second here okay this might be the toughest part I don't know fuck this stuff's all crazy so this one is you know everything's really heavy at this point so we're gonna get it in this press put the end of a shaft in there and I'm gonna use this other spacer to kind of help me kind of hold this thing up okay and then uh, and then we're gonna get this all kind of set up so it goes like that but uh, can't just do it that easy right so we gotta get these two meshed important thing is you got to get this one 
started. Okay. And then to clear all this shit, we need a long, long dose there. Remember, as we drive this, we're driving that gear onto the woodruff key, so that's going to take some pressure when it goes. And uh, so we need to pay attention to what's going on here. So we'll go ahead and get that servo in there. And stop and check. Make sure things are proceeding. It's going just perfect right now. thing I noticed about presses, I love them, but the uh, crazy thing is they can really fuck something up fast, so you gotta really watch it. I'm watching underneath this gear right here to make sure I know when it seats and I'm not really gonna... There it is. Put any extra pressure, because uh, like I said, this is a uh, 20 ton block. And it can do 20 tons of damage and fucking heartbeat, so I don't mean to sound too dramatic. But <laughs> it's true. I've bent stuff before. Not this transmission, thankfully, but anyways. Okay, so it's on there now. We're going to take it back, and we've got a snap ring to put right in there. And then we've got a bearing, the nose bearing, to install. And then we're done with the whole front end. Okay. So we're totally done with the front end, and it's real nice. Everything's really nice. Everything's lining up, so notice how all the gears are meshed and they're even. I'll check the, the run out in a second here, but, uh, and then the uh, synchros. Nice. It's a little rough, but when that bears in, it'll be good. This side, good. Okay, bearings are pressed in, they're all lubed up. So remember, we'll press these two in the bell housing. This one has a large snap ring retainer. This one has nothing, but it has a, it uh, fits into the cover. And then remember, we've got some shim, shims that you've got to measure here to prevent, you know, to um, eliminate the run out on that, uh, on the counter shaft. Um, so now, what we're gonna do is uh, probably done for the day, but we're, we're not gonna start working on the back end. So where we have the fifth fifth gear overdrive in the reverse, that's up here. And then we've got some other idler and the counter gear on the back side. So we'll work on that tomorrow. And then of course, then we got the nut and a bearing and, a, um, and the speedo drive. All right, so uh, we in the last video we finished the, the front section of all the gears. That's uh, first, second, third, and fourth, and now we've got to start on the back. That's fifth and reverse, uh, the overdrive fifth, and then the reverse gear. So what I've done here is I already installed the idler gear, very simple, and then I uh, installed the first cog small gear here that engages with the idler. There's a spacer behind it so that goes on first and butts up against the bearing. And then uh, this one comes in here and we just mesh those gears. Okay, so there we go. Remember this one's got a snap ring on it on both sides. So that's all set. Then the, uh, the next step is to 
slide this piece on. It's the three tab spacer. It's right on here over the spine section and butts up against the main bearing. Then we have the uh, Synchro Hub. It's this. It goes on this direction. Slides on those spines just like that. And then those three tabs engage with the three tabs on the back of the Synchro. Okay. There we have that. And the uh, Next step is the new Synchro for fifth. So it just fits in there. Again, there's these indents here that engage with the pawls, the springed dealios in there. And then, uh, and then the next step is the bearing sleeve. This is the one that was kind of a pain in the ass to get off to begin with. Uh, it's like this. So that's what the bearing runs on. And uh, it's just like that. Just put a little, little oil on that, a little gear oil. And uh, And we'll just be able to get it started. And uh, thinking what I'm going to do here is use the old nut to, uh, to help drive this on. So it's a left hand thread. So that started it. It's not going on as easy as I'd like. I may look at uh, using a piece of pipe and a correctly spacer, a correct size spacer here to, uh, to drive that on. So I'm gonna hold the video and come back. Okay, I've decided to uh, go ahead and use the nut to, uh, to drive this on. Doing, you're gonna see this tool in a little bit here. This is something I fabbed up so I don't have to use that weird wrench on the big nut and then do some weird calculation on the torque. Essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this to hold the sat, the, I'm gonna use this to turn the main shaft and then I'm gonna hold that nut, that old nut right there with a pair of uh, channel locks because I don't care about this thing. And, uh, and I'm just gonna drive this home. Just nice and easy. So I'll uh, come back to this. Okay, so I drove that on almost all the way and then uh, the nut bottomed out on the threads. So the threads don't extend far enough. So I'm with about an eighth of an inch of seating this sleeve. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to have to rig up a sleeve and a pipe and uh, and then I'll tap it in the rest of the way. I'll be right back. All right, success. So uh, I uh, drove the, uh, used the old nut to drive that sleeve on. It went on nice, really no issues, went on pretty easy for the last little bit. So what I did is uh, I realized I'm botting that on the nut thread and when I pulled it off. So I grabbed the spacer. This is the next piece that goes on. This is, has a detent ball uh, in the shaft right there. So I just put it in without the ball just to act as a spacer. It's the exact right size and then put the nut back on and drove it the rest of the home, rest of the way home. So that's where we're at and uh, everything's looking good. Things flowing perfectly, so uh, more to come. Let me get set up for the next procedure. Okay, so I took the nut off. Just leave that alone for now. Uh, next gear to go on is on the shaft below, on the counter shaft. And so we've got this gear here. Just need to get those engaged. There we go. 
All right, so I just said there was a detent ball. That's not totally correct. There is a detent, but it's this uh, small shaft plug instead of a ball. So we'll uh, put it right in there and then slide the washer on until it engages just like that. And then there's the brand new nut, left hand thread. So we'll uh, move the threads both pieces. And uh, thread that on. Beautiful. That is smooth as smooth. Sweet. Okay, so we're going to torque that to the factory setting, but I'm not going to do it right now because I got to go get an, I think, an inch and a half wrench. And then I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So basically, I uh, made a made a little jig here. So uh, I showed you this before. That's the uh, end of a propeller shaft that was going to get trashed. So what I've done here is uh, let me put it on here, and I'll adjust the camera so I'm not trying to do too many things at the same time. So what this is, is I welded an old socket, a half inch drive socket, just cut the nose of the socket off, shaped it around this piece of three quarter inch pipe, and then just welded it all the way around with the MIG. And, uh, and then a bolt goes through. So that's gonna restrain the shaft while I tighten it. So I'm gonna put a torque wrench on that, half inch drive torque wrench. And then over on the, the nut, I'm gonna put an inch and a half wrench to just hold that steady and then I'm going to be applying the torque to this end so when I do that it just makes everything right because this is going to be your typical right hand tightening motion and that's going to be held because it's a left hand thread so you don't have to do any monkey business like they show in the shop manual with a, you know with a calculation to you know to account for the fact that you're using a special wrench, blah, blah, blah. So I thought this was a good way. Uh, you got to have this stuff to make it work. So I admit that <laughs> it takes some extra work. But I tell you, if you do a lot of work on Dotsons, get an old piece of this. I mean, you can use it for so many things uh, that I pointed out earlier. So that's what's coming up next. And uh, we'll see you then. All right, here's the, uh, the next step I'll show you here. So this bearing needs to be tapped on, so I've lubed it with gear oil. Got a uh, one inch pipe here, fits on that inside race, so I'm gonna tap it in gently. Going easy. There it is. And then we'll uh, put the nut on there and uh, tighten that to specs and, uh, and we'll be good. Okay, this is for uh, the lock nut on the main shaft right here. This is a reverse thread. I mentioned earlier, manuals kind of have a, has kind of a convoluted way to do this. Uh, and I decided to do differently. So I made this little jig here. I showed it to you earlier. So basically it allows me to put a half inch drive torque wrench on the end there. And then I've got a one and a half inch uh, wrench on the nut here. And uh, so then I just, all I'm gonna do is hold my left hand steady, that's on the nut. And I'm gonna be turning the, the shaft through this jig that I made until I get the click. So here we go. So that's uh, preset at 90, and then I need to get to 110 is uh, the spec within the range. So I'm going to uh, do that one more time, and, uh, and then we'll all be done. Okay, 
to finish this off. So the torque spec is uh, 100 to 120 more or less. So I'm going to shoot for the middle. I'm going to do it at uh, 110. So again, holding everything steady. And here we go. There it is. Perfect. Okay, this is the sequence, uh, the process I used to tighten the nut on the counter shaft. Okay, so we just did the main shaft, 110 foot-pounds. This one is less. It's uh, factory says 72 to 94, so I'm going to shoot kind of somewhere in the middle. And I always like to sneak up on this thing, so I'm going to put it at... Uh, Well, I'm pretty close. I just tightened it. So I'm going to put it up to uh, right where I want it, which is halfway between. I'm going to target, uh, say, 80, 80 foot-pounds is within their uh, spec. Okay. Got that set. Using a 3 8 inch drive is more manageable. And then I've got it braced out here against the bench. You can't really see it. It's got a pipe there. It comes off the fixture I made down to the bench so I can just pull this up until I get the click. Oh, that transmission wants to, wants to move here. And I saved, didn't get my toe. <laughs> all right, so there we go. We're all torqued up. I'm going to stake those, and then uh, we'll be done. Okay, here's the last bit. So we're going to uh, stake these. Can use uh, can use either of these. You can use a simple punch, center punch, or something that's more custom. Uh, I don't think it really matters. You just need to create a little bit of a dent. And this soft metal that's over this keyway area here. So we're gonna turn it to up and just give it a couple taps. And it's flattening out. And let me give it one more. And that should be good. It's not going anywhere. All right, we just got done staking the nut, uh, the nuts, and now we're going to put in the uh, the end bearing that engages with the tail housing, and it's retained by a couple of retainer clips, so. Keep that in position. So we've got that first one on. Got a brand new bearing here. Slide it on. Uh, there we go. Put a little uh, lube on there. Just kind of ease it on. pipe again I believe okay I found a good size uh, pipe for this there's some cool stuff that if you go to a, any kind of metal place I mean look at that pipe it's a one inch pipe but it's I believe but it's thick walled so the interior I mean it's just a beefy and it fits perfect on there I have a lot of different pipes like that and then I bring out the old trusty Campanola headset tool that fits right on the end here and then we'll uh, We'll just tap that bearing into place. A little bit further. Okay. There's a different sound there, so I know it's now against the retainer, and I go back there, yep. And then we've got the next retainer ring. And 
and uh, same kind of story. Expand it, slip it on, and it snaps right in place. So that bearing's in there. A little lube in there. Okay. And the next piece is the uh, is the Speedo drive. It also has a pair of retainers. So same kind of procedure. All this one we won't have to tap on. It's just going to go easy. So there's that. Hmm. That doesn't seem right. It seems really loose. Have to check that out. And this one we've got a, a ball bearing. Detent. Keeps that gear from spinning around. little concerned about how loose and wobbly that damn thing is, but uh, let, me, uh, let me see how the other one fits. I can't tell if these are exactly the same or if they're factory or what, but we're going to find out how this one fits. Huh. Yeah, that one's much better. This one's just not right. It is not right. Okay, so we may have to go get a new retaining pin. I didn't notice that for these things should snap perfectly in place they shouldn't be wobbling around like that thing's just flying all it's like it's the wrong side so let's pull this one off compare it um, hopefully the retainer slot is not damaged yeah, I can already tell these look they do look Show you what I'm looking at here. There's the two rings. They look very similar, but uh, yeah, one is uh, one is definitely sprung by a good sixteenth of an inch. So uh, this one is, you can see, it's wider at the mouth. So this one works. The other one's just too damn loose. So let me check that out and uh, get back to this. Okay, I flip-flopped those around. I put the smaller ring on the inside, slid the gear, and then I checked this one, and now it's fitting tight, so there seems to be just a little difference, but uh, I feel good about that. This is a, it's a speedometer gear, so it's not like it's uh, super critical, and you know, it's not like there's a huge load on this thing. It's just spinning to turn that speedometer, so I feel confident that that's good. So that's it, everything's in. Um, Next step is to put the shift rods in and all that assembly. So that's coming up next. All right, so this is the uh, segment on uh, assembling the shifting rods. And um, so there's uh, three holes here in the intermediate plate. That's where the rod slides. So the top, bot top, middle, and bottom. Remember, they've got all kinds of detent bearings in there. So the first one we're going to install is the bottom, but uh, before we do that, so the top one is um, is for uh, first and second gear, which is here, and then the middle one is for third and fourth, which is these two, and then the bottom bar is for fifth and reverse, which is on this side. So we're going to start with the bottom bar. Got that here, marked everything, tagged it. And uh, this part here, zip tied everything. So uh, lube that hole. Already did that, and then we're gonna slide the selector off here. Put some lube on there. Okay, then we're gonna engage this the fork in there there 
then slide this forward into the bottom hole. There we go. And then you can see, you can't see, but I can see, there's uh, the detent detail. I'll grab another one here to show you. So this is the middle fork. It has the same piece in there. So there's the detent. So um, <clears throat> in this case, the uh, the detent is the middle one. That's where the ball bearing goes. So that's the for the top. There's a stacked set of balls that uh, are inserted from the top hole. And then this one on this side is for the uh, is for the um, detent ball that comes from the side. So hopefully that makes sense. Probably doesn't, but uh, you'll see as you pull it together at all, and obviously do your own research and all that. But. So, uh, so this one is set up. So now the next step is to uh, is to drive in the uh, the split shaft, the pin or retaining pin, and I'll do that next. Okay, we're still on uh, the lower fork. So I started tapping that in. Just It's really easy, no problem there at all. And then we're just going to continue tapping that. Until uh, it's flush. And I'm feeling on the bottom. Right, so the first rod is in, and I put the split uh, pin in there to uh, lock that in. So uh, this one, remember, this is the bottom one, and it's engaged with the fifth gear synchro on this side, the fork is. So the next thing we got to pay attention to are these uh, the detent balls that make all this work, allow you to shift gear and hold the fork in the right place. Three holes here, so and then uh, you've got inserts here, here, bottom, middle, and then top, and springs. So look at the pictures. Make sure you record everything. But so we got the bottom, uh, the vertical balls go bar, then two balls between these holes one and two then a bar, and then two balls between the hole, the middle, and the top bar. So that's four balls, and then you have one ball that's loaded in from the, the, the hole side with the spring. So one, two, three. So we have a total of seven. These are, uh, and I ended up just buying new ones. This is a standard piece. So and then I mic'd them and checked them, and sure enough, they're the same. They're uh, point 0.1, well, it reads point 0.1. 0.313, but it's really 0.3125. So I'm going to, uh, first thing I'm going to do is the bottom hole. So uh, get the ball bearing loaded in from the side here, get the spring, and then that's in. Then we're going to lock tight with blue Loctite, these retaining bolts. All right, so I just tighten this up with uh, the bottom bolt, retainer bolt, and with the Loctite. So the next step is the next two balls, and they load in from the top. That is from the middle hole. There's one. And there's two. Okay, so now those are in. We can put in the, uh, the middle bar 
that is for uh, third and fourth gear. So I'll get that set up. Okay, now we're going to uh, install the middle bar. Again, this is for third and fourth gear. So the fork here goes way up in the front. So I'm going to engage that first in that, hold that, and then thread it through the first bar and the first fork through the intermediate plate. And it's all lube, slides right in, no problem. And then through the fork here. And then we line up those holes for the split pin. All right, and then on this, you'll start to see <clears throat> on the uh, front end right here, these are all lining up the, f the uh, nose of each the fork here. So that'll engage with the shift rod and the rear housing when we get it all together. So I'm going to drive that pin and I'll be right. All right, I just drove in this pin it's for the third and fourth selector. So that's in. So that next step is to, uh, is to install the side detent spring. So I grab another ball, load that in the side right there. spring and then uh, using Loctite, blue Loctite on this one. Stuff like this, I just I can gauge it by hand. Uh, these are pretty low torque, and I don't find with low torque stuff. I swear, torque wrenches cause more trouble than they're worth because at those lower settings, they don't necessarily read really accurately unless you get one specifically for that. I don't have one, so these I just I can do it by hand. All right, so uh, there we go. So now we're gonna take two more balls, just like we did on the last, and uh, we're going to drop them in from the top before we put in the third top selector. And uh, I'll get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so the final and the, the top bar here. So we're going to start by, uh, first of all, lubing this up a little bit. Selector fork, this is for uh, First and second. And then it just slides in the top here and then rotate it and let it sit there. You grab your bar and it slides through the intermediate plate, through the selector fork, and all the way here. Right. <clears throat> so that's it. And then I'm going to put one more ball bearing in the top, a spring, and then uh, the retainer bolt. And then I'll drive this pin and we'll be done. All right, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a tour of the finished product. So it's all put in, all the forks, all nicely aligned. All the gears mesh beautifully. This thing's really tight now. I'm really uh, kind of psyched to see how this thing drives. The all important part here. And uh, I did get need to get a couple of new circlips here. They were beat up. Watch out for stuff like that. I didn't notice it until I was finishing it up. Um, Tray installed, the idler, and then the main shaft. 
in the tail. So there we go. So the next step is to, uh, obviously, is we need to put this thing in a in the case, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, this is the uh, case assembly here. We've got an anaerobic sealer applied to that gasket surface there, and then we're gonna draw the guts of this thing in. And uh, as you do this, you're looking at the bearings, but also the rods, shift rods mount in the front case. And uh, get a little flashlight and shine it through the intermediate plate, see what's going on. Okay. Look, it's there. There we go. Okay. That went well. And then um, I've got the tail housing here, and it's been uh, similarly coated with the sealer. And I've got it in the neutral position. And then we're just coming from the top. That's it. And then we've got a couple of other pieces here that we've got to insert. Uh, we're going to lock tight these these bolts for the case halves. But uh, that's it. Pretty simple assembly, actually. Just get everything lined up and drop it in. That's it for now, and I'll be back in a bit for more. All right. There it is, all assembled, sealed up tight. Still need to put the front plate in. But uh, I just wanted to point out a few things. So, started with the bell housing, you saw that on the ground, on blocks, so that the it'll clear the, uh, the input shaft, tip of that. And then you drop that in, make sure that engage the three shift rods in the front uh, of the bell housing. That went easy. And then, um, and then I put in the tail piece, you saw that, but I had to pull it back out because um, I goofed. And the manual's pretty clear on this, I didn't bother reading a section. So the trick is you have to turn your shift, uh, shifting rod um, counterclockwise and then make sure that it's in the neutral position. It describes it in the, in the manual. You gotta get in that position so that fully clockwise or counterclockwise because then what happens is when you drop this the the uh, tail housing in, it, uh, the shift linkage uh, goes past the rods inside the end of those, and then it fits right in. So you can't just put it straight in. There's a just follow the manual. Other than that, it just dropped right in. And then torqued all the bolts and uh, new O-rings and some sealant on here, and then a uh, retained retainer on the end of that pin there. So uh, everything's good, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and reverse. So it's real tight, sweet, kind of sight. So anyways, there you go. I'll uh, come back and uh, we'll do the, uh, we'll measure for the shims on the front plate and then get that front cover installed. All right, here's the, uh, assembly for the uh, front cover and I just <laughs> I'm a freak I wanted to point out I'm rebuilding a Hobart meat cutter over here uh, 
friend of ours is opening a restaurant, so I took it on. Fucking cool piece of machinery, beautifully designed, and I got it working. So uh, very cool. Anyways, <coughs> back to this project. Okay, so I put the snap ring in. That's the external ring on the main bearing. So uh, and then uh, pushed it forward all the way for or all the way back into the case. And I checked that. So this is protruding um, just about the same that's in the cover. So I think we've got a good match there. It's not going anywhere. And then uh, procedure here is to shim uh, the uh, this bearing here. So I measured, uh, first of all, I measured how far the bearing is protruding right now. It's about 3.2 millimeters. And make sure you put a punch on it just carefully and then tap it forward um, so that you're getting the right measurement. So that's all the way forward. I got 3.2. That's how much it's protruding. And then I used the uh, depth gauge on uh, on the caliper here to measure in uh, the depth to the surface that the bearing is going to be resting on in the front cover. So that was 3.2 millimeters, more or less. And then the gasket's measuring about 0.74 uncompressed, so i got to make an assumption here. I'm going to assume that that compresses to maybe, not half, but 0 0.4, 0 0.4 millimeters. So if you add those up, I get 3.7 uh, is the kind of the depth that this is going to fit. So we're comparing the depth to the protrusion of the bearing. So the bearing is 3.2, the depth that I have built into this in the gasket is 3.7. So I've got a deficit of about a half millimeter that I need to use shims. These are the factory shims. Uh, they only come in one thickness now. They used to come in different thicknesses. But now they just sell, they figured you're gonna build it up. They're gonna make more money um, if you buy more of these. So uh, they weren't that expensive, I can't remember, but uh, these are 0.1 each. So my deficit is 0.5, or yeah, so I need five of these. So I'm going to, uh, when I assemble this, stack these in the front cover, seal the gasket, etc., and then uh, that'll keep that um, counter shaft from moving back and forth, because it will move. I mean, it, when I put it in here, it was easy to kind of push it back. So we want to keep it in that position, because I notice when it's in that position, everything's really quiet. When it was in forward, I could hear something rubbing, so you need to get that taken care of. So I'm going to put all this together, but I wanted to uh, point that out. And here's all the uh, shift shafts coming through, just FYI. All right, I want to do the, uh, the wrap up for this project and kind of let you know how everything turned out. So got the transmission all rebuilt, you saw that. You didn't see me put it back in the car, I kind of skipped that. Figured if you could get it out, you could get the thing in. Um, went in nicely, no problems. Took it for a drive, hoping for the best. And uh, <laughs> it came out perfect. I know, that's hard to believe. You don't get to see that, say that very often, but it, it really did. Shifted all through the gears, five gears, perfectly super quiet, super smooth, great power uh, to the wheels. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better result, so I'm really, really happy, really stoked about that. Um, I just wanted to cover a couple of things. Um, the, the dealer parts, uh, so I did both online dealer um, and then also my local dealer. If I was gonna do this, when I do this again, I'd like to do another transmission. I would, I would probably see about getting everything through the local dealer because you're not going to pay any shipping. Um, you might pay a little bit more, but uh, and they can get it there quick. To give you an example, um, I got most of the parts online and then I needed those six torque screws in the intermediate plate that you saw there. Went to my local dealer, Future Nissan in Roseville, California near Sacramento. And uh, actually I called them, right? And they said, oh yeah, we can have them there next day. And I went down there, sure enough, next day they had them, five and a half bucks. So uh, I think it's awesome that Nissan is supporting, you know, uh, their old cars with uh, parts. You still get them. Um, there's not a lot of companies that do that for 40-year-old cars, so I think that's great. 
I got the, um, the kit, the bearings, the synchros, and the seals. That only cost me like 85 bucks, I think it was. And I got it through American uh, Powertrain Warehouse. Uh, really great deal. All Japanese bearings and the synchro quality was really good, so I was happy with that. Um, I also want to thank the enthusiasts that do the websites. Um, there's several of them there that offer uh, the factory service manual. And uh, the factory service manual, you got to have a copy of that. That is uh, just essential for working on these cars. But I do have to add, bad Nissan, um, you know. I, I went back to one of these sites to get the manual for the 82 transmission that I had and they had to shut down. They had to, you know, uh, stop offering the factory service manuals and guess what? It's the attorneys, yeah. The Nissan attorneys uh, threatened a lawsuit against this uh, website, which is total bullshit. They claim that it's intellectual property and all that horse shit. It's not any of that. All it is is attorneys looking for something to do. They should focus on things, other things. There's a lot of better things they could be working on other than looking to take manuals off the line that are 40 years old. That's stupid, Nissan. Because, um, by the way, the people using those manuals are people that love your cars, and they're more liable to, uh, to buy new cars. Imagine that. Yeah, sales. Heard of it? Okay, so um, just a couple of the lessons kind of learned here. Everything I did is on the video, so watch those videos. I put a little time into it, uh, quite a bit of time, um, to try to detail it. So watch the video, watch other people's videos. Um, replace the synchros. You know, I've heard stories about, well, don't replace the synchros because they're, if they're working okay, if you replace them, they might be rougher, you might be worse off. I didn't have that experience at all. I ended up just deciding I'm going to replace them all, and they all worked perfectly. So really happy with that. Another lesson learned is these things have to go together in a certain order, the gears, the synchros, all of it. And if you get out ahead of yourself, um, you could assemble one part, press the bearing, and then realize, oh crap, I gotta take that bearing off or that gear off because uh, I have to put the other one on that needs to mesh with it. So just pay attention to the assembly order and uh, you'll stay out of trouble. You know, all in all, this project, I've never done a transmission before. This was easier than an engine rebuild in a lot of ways. I mean, it's complex, no doubt about it. You got to pay attention, but um, I was uh, I was really happy with the result because I got a Z now that's got a brand new transmission in it, and it is baby smooth. So, uh, anyways, that's it. I hope this helps uh, anybody that's watching the video. It helps you, encourages you to do it if you got the tools and the know-how. I definitely do it because it'll make a world of difference in your car. So that's it, and uh, thanks for watching. See ya.